Orphan chimps, cute, playful, funny. Just another chimp in the forest. <laughs> the wild ones, untouched, powerful, and primal. The chimpanzee came out of nowhere, whoa, they grabbed it. Between them, we'll find out what it's like to be a chimpanzee. And we're joining a hunting party of chimpanzees on a primal hunt for monkeys. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes. On their turf. By their rules. the creature. Head over to the world's second largest continent, right here in the center where things are lush and green. We're here in the rainforest of equatorial Africa with a group of orphan chimpanzees. <laughs> the mission of this creature adventure is to get to know who chimpanzees are and what it's like to be one of them, our closest relatives in the entire creature world. We'll be taking a journey deep into the wilds to join up with the largest community of wild chimpanzees known on the planet. And these chimps are as wild as it gets. They're the most incredible hunters, hunters of monkeys. Do you think you have that in you? They've already taught us so much about the chimpanzee spirit and their own innate creaturenalities. And they're giving us a head start on finding out what it's like to be a chimpanzee. But they know next to nothing about being a wild chimpanzee. Because as mere infants, many of them saw their mother killed by a hunter and were ripped from her dying body. Thrown into the illegal international trade of exotic animals, never to return to the wild. But miraculously, these few young chimps here were rescued and now live on the Nagamba Island Sanctuary. A 97-acre island where they'll live out the rest of their lives. Want to meet them? This is Kasembo, about four years old, a confident and cheeky chimp. <laughs> this is Nani. Only two years old and one of the smallest. She's happy and independent soul. Okech loves this, playing the chimpanzee belly. <laughs> she loves being held, always being in contact with somebody. Indy is so interested in the camera. Everything about it, checking out the flashing red light. Indy can't get enough. No, no, no. Oh. Here we could come into such close contact. Oh, no tripping. Closer than we could ever come in the wild. We could feel their weight on our backs, and we realized what solid, strong, compact, powerful creatures chimps are, even when they're three years old. I can't see anything. <laughs> I side, you guys are heavy. Are you coming up too? Oh, man. The crabs are falling behind. <laughs> we had our hands full, but we did get some help from Francis. Once a young orphan herself, now a mature female, she was acting like a surrogate mom, showing a lot of interest and taking care of these young chimps. Indy's back. Been looking for more trouble to get into. Look out, Nani! Look out! Oh! Give her a pinch, knock her over! Indy now he knows he's in trouble. Uh oh, here comes Francis! Look out, Chris! <laughs> So what exactly happened here? Indy roughhouses a younger chimp. Now his and Asiga's body language show they're feeling guilty, a little worried. And Francis, taking on the role of surrogate mom, charges into discipline. <laughs> Just like human kids, chimp kids need supervision. Each young chimp should learn the ways of the wild from a chimp like Francis, their mother. When they're with their mothers, this is how they ride through the forest on mom sometimes, just clinging on. The mother-infant bond is really strong in chimpanzees. Like us, chimpanzee kids are very dependent. For about the first eight years, they are with mom, learning so many vital skills. 
This relationship is key to a chimp's success as an adult, but the orphans have to make do with surrogate moms. Hey! He's standing. Wow. There. They look relatives. so human when they're standing like that. Our closest relatives <laughs> on two legs. They stand right on two feet like us. They share 98% of our same DNA, a mere 2% difference. And chimps actually laugh just like humans do. Let's see if we can find his tickle spot. <laughs> Chimp man! Yes, you're a chimp man! <laughs> the reason they don't have any facial hair is so they can clearly communicate with facial expressions. Just like humans. But you don't have any eyebrows. This, combined with an elaborate facial musculature, allows them to communicate their moods, feelings, and emotions. Right here, the classic chip play face, upper teeth covered, mouth wide open. The compressed lip face, sometimes a sign of aggression. Over there, Okech is pouting, a sign of distress. That's right, come on up here, Okech. And Indy is giving us that low, close grin, which means he is excited. You can see the excitement and the aggressive streak bubbling up in these young orphans. It's a characteristic that would serve them well in the wild because male chimpanzees get together and hunt monkeys. Look out, Indy's on a rampage. Look out, Martin, he's eyeing the camera. Whoa! Oh. Hey, hands off. What are you doing? Oh, hey! He has a microphone. He's got the microphone. Catch him. We need that, buddy. We gotta get that back. This is a game for Indy, and play is a precursor to hunting in social animals, and wild chimps hunt monkeys. This is just like hunting a monkey, but now the tables have turned. He's the monkey, and I'm the chimp. I've got him out on the end of a branch, right where I want him. Martin, don't let him get to the ground. I'll catch an eye cutting him off. Now down below, we are watching. For, for any monkeys that might move over here. Then we cut off their route of escape, or we catch them when they fall, right? You got that? You got that? Chips will work together from above and below to corner their prey. Hey, what are you doing back there? Get him. Get Indy. Oh. <laughs> Here's the microphone thief. Here he is. Oh, and there he goes. Little Indy, he could have been a great hunter had he stayed in the wild. You are a relentless hunter. Uh-oh, it's coming back <laughs> Hands and feet they can grab. Can't keep you away from this camera mic cover, huh? You've learned pretty quickly that that gets our attention. Oh! Oh! <laughs> These chimps all have their own personality. Some like to fling right into your face or they're mischievous and like to take your microphone foam. Others just like to hang out with a friend. Nice, calm, and peaceful. Like you, Okat. Is Chris giving you a good piggyback ride? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so great to get out with you. But now it's time to start that journey that these chimps may never take to go deep into the rainforest and join a troop of chimpanzees in the wild. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Be good. All right, see you guys. Oh, give my rest, let us see you later. But we gotta go. It was hard to leave the orphans, and they didn't want us to go. The next morning, we began to journey away from human territory. We're going back to the wild, where the lives of these orphans began. Back to a place where wild chimpanzees have been surviving for countless generations. We're gonna see where our chimp friends came from and keep them in mind as we go. 
so we left the shores of Lake Victoria and headed inland to the foothills of the Ruanzori Mountains. This was the home to the largest known chimpanzee community on the planet, who were also the most efficient hunters in the chimpanzee world. Try this way. They're around here somewhere. We gotta find them. One way to find chimps is to first find their food. Chris, fruit! Fruit, fruit! Oh. You very opsis, and it's ripe. That's exactly what we need, because when these trees fruit, it brings the chimps together. There's something up there. I heard a hoot. Now we just gotta find them. And listen for another call. That was monkeys. You hear those big crashes in the forest, you think it's gotta be a chimpanzee, but it's just the small monkeys, the mangabees, colobus, jumper, like right there, a red-tailed monkey. Those little monkeys are so loud, it is so easy for the chimpanzees to locate them when the chimpanzees want to hunt. So the fruit is here, the monkeys are here, and somewhere in the forest, the monkey-hunting chimpanzees of Uganda. Let's go this way. Where are the chimps? Just saw the branches moving from a leap. There's one right there. Right over here. Right up there, you see it? He's in the UV tree. Chris, here's another one. Are they coming down? Yeah. They're moving. They're in the trees when they feed. But when it's time to travel, the chimps come out of the trees and move along the ground. There are two. I can see two. He's coming right down. The big one, he's coming lower. Of all the apes, none other than the chimpanzee can work the trees as well as the ground. They are perfectly comfortable in both environments. Oh, he's down. He's coming low. Hoping he'll come this way. On the ground with wild chimpanzees. Oh, great. Second one coming right down. Which way are we headed? He scans the treetops, looking for red fruit, very aware of what's going on around him. Look at that face. What a cool creature. You look in their face and you can see a personality. That is an individual sentient being. We have to keep up with them. They may be joining another larger party. We were following two male chimps. And when chimps move, they really move. Getting up to about eight miles an hour, you can't let them out of your sight or they will just blend into the forest. So here we go. We're traveling this way, leaving this nice dense patch of Ovariopsis for another, or who knows what else. It doesn't look like they're in hunting posture. I think they're just casually moving from tree to tree. That's how chimpanzees work. They're a fission fusion society. Chimps in a community will separate, go off on their own to feed, especially when food is scarce. But then they congregate when food is plentiful. And when chimps congregate, hunting parties form. Martin, over here. Together, chimpanzees on the ground. The chimps go from one tree to the next during this fruiting season, searching for ripe Uvariopsis fruit. Oh, <laughs> he just spit out a mouthful of the UV seeds. So this is the fruit of the season. Just like in our grocery stores, the fruit is good at certain times of the year. It's the same thing with Uvariopsis, and this is what the chimpanzees are eating right now. Wow. 
It's tart. That's really kind of sour. I oh, see. There's seeds. Each seed has a nice wrapping of pulp around it. And you put them in their lip like that. They're just really kind of dissolving the pulp around the seeds. And then when it's dissolved, they either spit them out or swallow them. I can't eat too many of these, and that's why. UV fruit causes diarrhea in chimps, and since we have 98% of the same DNA, it's very likely it'll have the same effect on us. So one fruit, that's it. Different chimpanzees learn to take advantage of the foods in their different habitats. Here they eat UV fruits and hunt monkeys. In other communities, they get extra protein from cracking palm nuts or eating safari ants. Oh, these are safari ants marching through the forest by the millions. To a chimpanzee, this is a stream of food, a river of protein. It comes with some cost. These guys pack a powerful bite. You can see the soldiers lined up along the column to protect the workers inside. Now, both ants pack a powerful bite. Look at how these guys latched onto the stick with his jaws. Can't even flick them off. That's the jaw power these guys have. Ow! So, the chimpanzees have a special way of accessing this protein designed to keep them from getting bitten. What they do is they use a stick and they dip the stick into the stream of ants. Ooh, I almost got bitten there. These soldiers are heading towards me. They dip the stick into the stream of ants until it's covered with ants. And then it's all about speed. They pop that stick into their mouth and swallow the ants before they can bite them. Get them on, get the ants on, and... One got my throat, but I got him into... Ow! I got him into my stomach acid just in time. Chris picked up slurping ants. But how about teaching orphans to crack nuts? There we go. And you get the nut inside. That's how it works. OK, you try. Yes. Yes. Mothers demonstrate the technique, and the young follow her lead. This is intelligence. Picking up a skill as intricate as this, they still need a little bit more practice and coordination, but they're getting it. OK, you want to try? Go for it. No, 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 you don't hit the rock with the palm knife. You hit the palm knife with the rock. What kind of move was that? Slapping the guy in the face. OK, ready? Here you go, guys. Who wants to crack? <laughs> You're a troublemaker. You can't smack a guy in the face when he's trying to learn how to crack palm nuts. Chimps have different customs throughout Africa, and we are here with the best known chimpanzee hunters in the world. This community, they're great at it. They've got the numbers, they've got the skill, and they've got the training. But a chimp can rarely do it alone. He must join others. Here, a successful hunting party averages 26 chimps. Over there. Took off into the thick brush. Now I see him. Oh yeah, right there. See him up there. Got back in the UV tree. Whew. They're really putting us through the workout here, the chimp sprints. I know. It's tough. They keep us moving. Day five. We were tracking a small group of males, and a big gray-bearded guy was leading them in a vocal chorus. That's a pant hoot, the chimp contact call. It's used for long distance and can be heard from over a mile away. It helps chimps spread throughout the forest, let the other chimps know where they are.
chimps don't always jump to the ground. Chimps ease themselves by swinging from vines and knowing exactly the bend in each kind of a branch. And that way, a 40-foot jump is really just a very controlled glide down to the ground. And here, the chimpanzees show a unique form of locomotion that they only share with gorillas, knuckle walking. And we got a primer on the mechanics from our friends, the orphans. Technically, they're not walking on their knuckles, but rather on the mid joint of their fingers. Imagine putting all that weight on your finger joints, and not only walking, but running too. Look at a chimp's hand. They're so similar to ours. From the fingernails to the fingerprints, all the way to the thumb. Their thumb is much shorter and their fingers much longer. That enables them to grab onto thick branches, swing through the trees, and even get a good grip on trunks. Their fingers don't really even straighten 100%. These hands and feet are adapted for life in the trees. Hands and feet. These hands and feet make this arboreal, tree-swinging chimp lifestyle possible. Nice and easy, arm over arm, up the tree. That looks easy for them to do. But what about for us humans? Whoa, right on the vine. I gotta get up there with him. Oh, I knew this was gonna happen. He's already sitting pretty in the treetops, and I'm just halfway up the vine. There's no way you can keep up with these chimps in the trees. We're okay on the ground, but in the trees, we're so incompetent by comparison. We're seeing new, different faces of this chimp community. Now we're following a group of three. But is this enough to begin a hunt for monkeys? Is he going up or down? Down, he's right down. Okay, let's go over here and see. We were really getting a feel for this fission fusion society. Chimpanzees coming together and splitting off to fill their bellies in the UV trees. And it's when their bellies are full that they have the energy and the mood to hunt. If we stick with them and are lucky, we may be there for a gathering that decides to go off and hunt monkeys. Chris. Oh, eating UV fruit. Okay. I love these chimpanzees. They're blood brothers. In fact, chimpanzees and humans can donate blood to one another. We can exchange blood. That's how close of a relative they are. What's wrong with his left hand? Oh, it's crippled. See that snare mark? Later on the hand. The fingers have gone dead probably from gangrene. So many chimps have scars like this with snares. Some get killed by the infection. He has to survive crippled. But still, he's a great climber. See, what happens is a chimpanzee is walking down a path like usual, heading towards another fruit tree and unknowingly comes upon a snare covered by leaves, which is set for other forest animals by poachers. Not specifically for chimpanzees, but a chimp hand or foot fits nicely right into the hidden loop, and boom, the snare is sprung. It tightens around the chimpanzee's arm, hand, or wrist. The chimpanzee panics. Whoa! Whoa! Pulling, and the noose tightens. Our guy, got caught right like that. The scar was right around the back of the hand and it cut off the circulation. He probably broke the rope and was able to run off because with the strength of a chimpanzee, they can rip out of this, but not this tightened knot. So that knot stays on for too long. Nerve damage, gangrene in the fingers. Chimpanzees have lost fingers. Our guy, his fingers went dead can't use the fingers on that hand because of a snare like this. Over here, another casualty. This chimpanzee has a bad hand. All his fingers are cut off by a snare. 
He walks holding that snared hand up as he goes. He can still climb. Amazingly, up to 25% of this chimp community has injuries like this. The thick trunks are no problem, even with one bad hand. This happens so often with chimpanzees. They get captured in these snares. It maims and kills many, many chimpanzees each year. And sometimes a mother may get captured in one of these. If she's still here, she gets killed. Her infant's captured, sold off into the pet trade. They end up who knows where in captivity, ripped from the wild. And that's the story of our orphans. That's how they lost their wild lives, the wild family, their wild future. Better take this down. Another snare found in the forest. It's the end of the day, and about time for the chimpanzees to start building their nests. Every night, the chimpanzees pick a branch, a nice, comfortable branch, make a bed of leaves, and sleep the entire night in a nest. OK, you want to try this nest building thing? Come here. It looks like a good enough spot. Young chimps have a natural inclination sure. for nest building. You just have building. to break some branches, create a little platform like They that. can even make some rough, simple nests of their own. Oh, OK. Well, it's sturdy enough. Hey, you want to try? Try up the nest. Oh, OK, you missed it. Want to go in the nest? That's right. Climb right up to it. But to get it right, a mother's guidance really helps. You'll have to settle for me, but I don't think it's sinking in. A wild chimp builds a new nest every night. The chimpanzees build their nests, and so do we. The closest we can do is hammocks. The big difference between us and chimpanzees is that when night comes, that's it. They go to sleep. There are no fires, no artificial lights. They just go with the rhythm of the sun, sleeping at night, waking up when the sun rises, and going out to hit the fruit that the sun and the rains produce. Tomorrow's another day, and this forest is a great place to sleep. Although, you know, I feel a lot more like a butterfly larva than a chimpanzee right now. As the nights and days wore on, we got into a rhythm of never seeing more than three chimps at a time. Now the day was here, the day we would join the primal hunters, chimpanzees hunting monkeys. Somebody's talking over there. They listened. Hunters do this when they come together. Grooming's really important in chimp society. They do it not only to keep the fur and skin healthy and free of parasites, but also it helps them to form alliances and decrease any tension. It's politics. That guy likes to use his thumb when he's grooming. He's getting something on that thumb and eating it off. That's something we didn't dare get a close look at with wild chimps, but the orphans, they're a different story. The chimpanzee louse that is so adapted to its host that when it feels the light hit it from parting of the hairs, it freezes so that the chimpanzee hopefully won't notice that it's there. Let's check your neck, buddy. Any on your neck? Nope, all clean. Bugs are a part of a chimp's life, and the wild ones live without it pesticides or repellents. These bees are all over the camera. I wonder how the chimps deal with these bees. wonder if they get stung. Sometimes they must. We have to be careful not to make any of these killer bees mad. Because if we squash one, the signal goes out to the rest. Before you know it, we'll have a swarm after us. They're everywhere. Probably attracted to our sweat. We must be near a hive. Let's get out of here. <laughs> There's somebody else. They're 
bad acting. One group was calling over there. This group starts making their contact sounds. From grunts, barks, squeaks, hoots, each chimp has his own vocal sound, and each sound expresses a different emotion. Like us, chimpanzees use vocal communication. That is the way, the primary way they stay in touch. They're all over. There are so many chimpanzees. This community numbers 150 chimpanzees. They're all spread out, but you can feel them coming closer together. There are a lot of calls right in this area, and we're seeing more and more chimpanzees together on the ground. There's more down there. So five here, four there. They're coming together. The great thing is, about chimpanzees. They're such complex creatures. Every hour could bring a new behavior, some kind of uh, uh, interaction between two individuals. You never know what's gonna happen. He's looking at somebody up there. He's displaying his strength, and he wants to show the other males that he's traveling with his stuff. Such incredible strength. Three-year-olds with the strength of an adult human. <laughs> Things are getting rowdy out here now. <laughs> Wild males beat to death monkeys and each other. <laughs> you really <laughs> Let's not play around with rocks too much. They're tough. They've got the muscle, they've got the teeth, they've got the whole package for being the great ape hunter, right? Yeah. Well, probably one of the higher ranked males, he's a big boy. And it's usually the dominant males who lead the hunting. They're the most active in the hunt and have the highest success rates. Chris, they're moving too fast. There they go. There they go. Pick it up speed. Keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Don't lose them. Woo! Woo! I lost them. They gave us a slip. So we just pushed on, going in the direction we thought they had gone. And miraculously, we found them. And they were hunting. Oh, he's moving out. Oh, no. The chimps are hunting. They're hunting monkeys. Hey, they're looking up. All right, the hunt is on. Everybody's moving together, looking up. There's some chimps in the tree right now. And this party that I'm with is on the ground, trying to see where the monkeys are going. If a monkey falls out of the tree, they're gonna grab it. He's looking up in position. Right. You can hear the monkeys in the trees. They're watching everything. We're following four chimpanzees here, including us, and there are dozens more just out of sight. Let's go, come on. What do you think, Chris? They're going, they're going. All right, we're having right in it. This hunt is a constant ebb and flow. We're going up now, they're going up. We've got the colobus where we want them. A broken canopy, oh, there they are, with the monkeys. He's jumping, it's... Does he have one? Yes, he has one, there it is. Got him. Oh, there he is! 
They're gonna take another one. Martin, I'm staying with this guy. More over here. Big party can kill over 10 monkeys. Okay, more are still hunting here. One chimpanzee. Call him. There goes the hunt up there. They're chasing them. They're clearing out of that tree. Oh, he made a flying leap. Oh, he's coming down. Oh, what a leap. They're moving now, right after the colobus. Go, Martin, go. They're in this tree top. The colobus cleared this way. Oh, yeah, I got the colobus. And the chimps see him too. The chimpanzees are in pursuit. Something big is happening above us. Did we get one? Is it his mouth? Oh, we're headed this way. The intelligence to do a hunt like this. It is court. He got another one. And another chimpanzee caught one. Oh. He caught it, the monkey's still twitching. He crushed his skull. Successful again. He got it, a red colobus, a young red colobus. That's number two for this hunting party of chimpanzees. A big male captures a red colobus. He's moving now with his prize. This is what happens when chimpanzee parties come together. It culminates into a hunt. A group of males, when fruit is ripe and abundant, go for meat. They have the energy they can put in the exertion into capturing prey. There he is. With the colobus. There he goes. He doesn't want anybody sharing with that. And why isn't anybody bagging? Of course. That's why you're most challenging. It's the dominant male who got that monkey. Nobody's begging for meat from him, or else they could get a beating. He'll enjoy that himself. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Suddenly, I'm alone. Past him. The cinema. A colonus. He's down. Here comes the chimp. He grabbed it. Whoa. Whoa. That monkey fell out of the trees and landed right on the tree above me. The chimpanzee came out of nowhere. Whoa. They grabbed it. Jeez, here comes another one. I couldn't believe that. That's three. That's three colobus monkeys. They have the colobus monkeys scattered on the run. And did you see the thinking, the way they were looking up, following the action from below, the strategy they have to isolate the colobus in a tall tree, cutting off rats of escape? And we saw firsthand. If I had been a chimpanzee waiting below, I would have snatched that monkey before the dominant male could have come down and grabbed it. I could have had that colobus simply by following and had a protein boost, which I would put on more muscle, give me a better chance of growing strong and achieving a high rank in this society. So it is a good strategy to be the followers, the, the cheaters, you could call them, on the ground who follow the hunt but don't actually actively participate in killing, corralling, or knocking the colobus out of the trees. Okay. It's my heart rate. Hundred and twenty. Chris, you're not gonna believe what happened. I'm coming up. Chris! What? What happened? They got two! They Down got there. two? Yeah, two more! The third one, the third catch, both the monkey and the chimpanzee almost fell on top of me. Suddenly, I hear something falling. Boom! A colobus monkey falls out of the trees, lands on a branch, dead. Suddenly, down, this chimpanzee, it was the number five. He grabs it, looking at me, thinking I'm a cheater. Swings down, hits the ground, moves off. And then another one, who was also a pursuer, just comes down 50 feet, hits the ground, 
and off they go. So that means deer. they caught three. three. Yeah, yeah. So, so you stayed with guy, that one? Yeah, this guy had one and a mother and her baby came and started begging, Are you asking serious? him for some meat. He wasn't sharing. He was he was eating it. He would let them have the tiniest morsels really? at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, the chimp kids stayed at a safe distance, but the mom got some meat, got some protein. That male shared with the female. It may give him a better chance when she's ready to mate. And that chimp kid, about four years old, sat there and absorbed it all. And they're still here. The mom and the baby, that hunt brought them out. This is great. A young, wild chimp about the same age as the orphans. Now we can see what life's like for wild baby chimps. We've been out with these wild chimpanzees for AIDS and have seen a hunt. It's been an old male world, more or less, but now we can spend some time with a wild mom chimpanzee and her baby. This is the young chimpanzee's mother. She's been watching him closely as he explores the treetops, and he's going on little forays around the treetops, getting used to grabbing onto those limbs, getting used to what branches will hold his weight, and just how to move around up there. He's doing pretty good, too. They move through the forest together, the mother and the young chimpanzee sometimes meeting up with other females and other youngsters where they can play together, interact with one another. Where's the mom? Where'd the kid go? Oh, there he is. They're always on the move, those chimpanzee kids. Could hardly keep up with him back at the uh, sanctuary. This is the point in the orphans' lives where they lost their mothers and the wild world, and they had to start depending on each other and building their own community at the Nagamba Island Sanctuary. That's nice of you, giving them a ride. Just like kids, every now and then all they want is a nice big hug. Yeah. That's what they get from their mothers in the wild, that kind of support, that kind of contact. So when a chimpanzee is ripped out of the wild, that has such psychological and emotional implications for these young, very intelligent animals. Makes you appreciate the value of the wild relationship of a mother and her baby. Young chimpanzees explore the forest more and more as they grow up. They take forays away from their mothers in the trees and on the ground as they really get to know their amazing forest home. Chained as pets. Locked in dark rooms, exploited in horrible ways. Many of the chimps in captivity are in a very bad way. But the lucky few end up here. Let's go. And we're back at the Nagamba Island Sanctuary. <laughs> If a chimpanzee orphan is lucky, she can end up here, living in a group and having a chance to roam in the jungle. It's a great life for them. Not as good as the life they could have had in the wild, but the next best thing. Let's go, bud. We'll give you a lesson we learned in the wild. You ready to hunt? Come on, let's go. Yeah, we're going this way. <laughs> you gotta be quiet. You gotta be, you gotta be quiet on the hunt. We're on patrol. We search the treetops for monkeys of any kind. Yeah, look around. You guys gotta look up in the trees. Look, look, look up, look up. Look up in the trees. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, this way, everybody. You're doing good. And you gotta be this quiet. Way. You gotta be quiet, buddy, okay? Keep an eye out, all right, buddy? Keep an eye out, come on. Chris, we have some stragglers here. I don't think they're very interested in learning how to hunt. 
You can go rolling. <laughs> oh, and here he comes with the sneak attack. <laughs> How was that? How was that? Yeah! Perfect! I think I've got it down. That's another way to get around. Chimpanzees have a creaturality more similar to humans than any other being. As a species, they're complex, social, tool-using, political animals. Their individual personalities are as unique and as varied as are ours. Our common ancestor went down different evolutionary paths only six million years ago. And to this day, when you come together with chimpanzees, you quickly connect to them as individuals and as a species. And it all brings to light that primal nature that we both have in common. One play. That's my face. You know, it's really pretty easy to understand what it's like to be a chimpanzee. We're a lot like you, aren't we, buddy?